Rawhide? Rawhide. <laughs> Rawhide. God, God damn it. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Resident Evil 1996. Um, so we... Uh, oh, I, I God, just, we've traveled back in time again. Yeah, we, we kind of we kind of had to for a bit, because uh, the, the episode we recorded of this segment of the game, um, I, I, did a, I, did a, I did a goof. I did a silly goof, but I fixed the problem this time, so everything should be fine now. Um, but yeah, so before we continue on to the guardhouse, I wanted to point out something cool that I love in the map for Resident Evil 1 that I don't think any of the other Resident Evil games do, which is that when you go to the map, you notice the layout of the mansion here before you select it, and as you go through the rest of the game, the other areas appear in the, uh, in the map, which, uh, which I thought was really cool, and that's a visual piece that I kind of wish they would bring back. It's but very cool. It's very cool, but anyway... A lot of little touches in this game that they don't bring on in the rest of the series. Yeah. It just happens every once in a while. They'll add a feature that's really cool, and then it just kind of drifts off and doesn't come back. I miss the feet turning pose. Yeah. <laughs> miss some feet turning action. We'll, we'll be getting that. We'll be getting there. We'll be getting back to that in a minute. But... I, I miss the classic dog howl. As do I. Woof, 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 woof. Bork, bork. I mean the monkey the monkey noises are just confusing. Truly. Uh, let's see. And alright, so I decided to go ahead and get the red herbs both the red herbs over here because I will not be able to pick the other one up until much, much later, if at all. So let's That's see. Fair. Okay. Also that pupper that pupper's got a got an issue. He's getting close. He's getting close. Okay. They he did, did it. Did it. You did it. Weinberg, away. Yeah. yeah. Whew. Chris Redfield. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Curly Redfield. <laughs> uh. Hey, Chris, can you fly this plane? Sweet me. Now, now I'm just imagining him, you know, doing that noise when he's punching the boulder. Why I ought to Ate that young knucklehead. Oh jeez. If, if you want to really be depressing about it, he could have been the three stooges with Forrest and Joseph. Oh no. <laughs> oh. 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 I mean okay, Forrest doesn't have the hair, but you know, hairstyle. Yeah, yeah, true. All the hair. He's, he's got... He has hair. That, that he yeah, does. He could have been Larry. Yeah. Okay, so we dodge... We have successfully dodged the Death Noodles and are on our way to dodge more of the Puppers. Boop the Snoots. Boop them. So we will see if... Uh, so I okay. So far in my practice runs of this, I've always had one of them start to chase me. So let's see. Oh, yep, there we go. Yep, there he go. There he go. It's Ooh, like at the last dementia. second. At the last second, he's just like, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. No, no, gotta get him. Gotta get him. Uh. So that last second, he's like, wait, squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Chris Redfield actually shaped like a squirrel. <laughs> Well, he's it like, would. Uh, he's like twenty. He's like twenty or like fifty squirrels in a trench coat. <laughs> the, the, I love how that's the thing with this franchise. It's many different things inside of a trench coat. You have ten thousand leeches in a trench coat. You have five or six squirrels in a trench coat. Five or six squirrels. I, I think it'd be like twenty or something. Twenty-five squirrels. Yeah. It's twenty to fifty squirrels. Twenty twenty to fifty squirrels. There you go. And uh, yeah. and and is. Uh, is Jill just a, like five thousand jelly beans in a trench coat? No, she's a sandwich. <laughs> oh, sandwiches. She, she's, she's made up of like many different sandwiches, all stacked on each other. That actually sounds terribly delicious. Like, can you imagine? Mm. No, I'm, I'm I'm totally serious. Oh, there we go. Okay, I think we've successfully comp blocked the plant. All right. Uh, yeah. That plant is like whoa. It's like, whoa. Dude, no. Why? Why? Yeah. Dude, why? Dude, why? Dude, 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 I'm trying to get some action here. Hey. Okay, so I gotta put these away, because I do not have the storage. My and... thought for the look of this room is, 
would. <laughs> oh, you would, wouldn't you? I would. <laughs> uh. I just planked out there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one wins. That's that's a punchline. Ding. One of these days, somebody is gonna punch me for all those jokes. I'm, I'm, you know, it's not gonna be us. I, 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 I am no. delighted by them. No, 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 it's a friend of mine. She said that if she ever meets me, she is going to punch me for every single punchline. Oh no! I'm gonna oh, no. end up in a coma. Oh no! <laughs> You know, she she does know that you're not supposed to take punchline seriously, right? I'm also supposed to know that uh, I'm supposed to stop once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so hard. Yeah, it's they're too much fun. Oh, and again, that wonderfully creepy discordant music. That's great. I love it. Ah, whoa. Oh no! That usually doesn't happen. <laughs> How how dare you? How what? Wow! There, whoa. there we go. Whoa! There. Whoa! Let's not be wearing a vest. Bro, what is your deal? What is all of their deals, man? They're all like coordinated outfits, and they're all walking whoa. the same. And scientists, they, yeah. they all gotta have the same lab coat. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess they have to, That's you know, use may have to wear the, the, the uniform. Later. Either that, or they're preparing for like the uh, annual Umbrella Thriller tribute. Oh boy, that has now become like for me like the most overused zombie gag in history. Is is the Thriller thing? I just I can't like it anymore. It's it's too obvious. I'm sorry to hear that, but I do love Vincent Price's rap in that. Yeah, that, okay. that is pretty good. Cool. It's Vincent pretty amazing. Price. But it's it's yeah. Vinny. Yeah. Gotta love Vinny. It's Vincent Price rapping. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering if by the time this goes up, if the Tingler will have been uh, riffed by uh, by the Mads yet. Because I'm very looking forward to that. As of this recording, looking forward. Yes, indeed. Although it's, it Does is... Does it leave a tingle in your spine, Crisp? A little bit. It is really strange to hear Trace below say fuck, though. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's amazing, but uh, it's a little, it's a little, tri it's a little trippy. <laughs> um, well, there goes the hopes of our uh, video getting monetized. <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah, we didn't Honestly, any chance that happened died a long time ago when I joined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we, we swear all the time. No, well, not only that, I mean, actually, as of this recording, we lost a subscriber, actually. Um, Aww. Aww. Yeah. It was, are they? I'll get them back. I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe this will Maybe this will get them back. Maybe this, you know, maybe actually, for all you people at home, this is actually our, our long game to get people to uh, come back to the to our program is playing Resident Evil games. Admittedly, it is Please probably... follow us. Yeah, I mean... And we Please. will be we will be doing much more of these because I mean there's a oh, lot of hit the like and subscribe buttons. Yep, and there's there's so many other Resident Evil games to play too. So it's like yeah, oh, yeah. I I call dibs on Resident Evil Survivor by the way. <laughs> sure. Yeah, fine. Which has its 20th anniversary, 20th anniversary in a couple oh. of weeks, a few you, weeks. You you can play through that mess. Yeah. You know what? Have at it. It's all yours. You you can have the Ark Thompson of the Resident Evil series. Yeah, because I pretty much am the Ark Thompson. Hey, there we go. The hey, there, there it is. There it is. I oh, you have an Anorak? I remember now. My name is Ark Thompson. <laughs> I'm a friend of Leon's. Okay, so Plan 42 report. All right, I'll go ahead and take this one. So, four days have passed since the accident, and the plant at Point 42 is growing amazingly fast. Uh, it has been affected by the T-Virus differently than other plants have been, and shows unique shape in addition to its size. Looking at the way it behaves, it is now difficult to determine what kind of plant it was originally. Uh, there are two ways with which the Plant 42 gathers nutrition. Uh, the first one is through its root that reaches into the basement. Uh, immediately after the accident, a scientist went mad and broke the water tank in the basement. Now the basement itself is filled with water. Basements. It is easily imaginable that some chemical elements were blended into the water and promotes the incredibly fast growth of Plant 42. 
Another part of Plant 42 from the basement grows through the duct and hangs down like the many bulbs, uh, like so many bulbs from the ceiling of the first floor. Uh, so many vines come out of these bulbs and are the second resource for its nutrition. Huh. <laughs> Once sensing movement, the Plant 42 uh, shoots its vines around the prey and holds it. It then starts sucking up the blood using suckers located at the back of its vine. <laughs> uh, but it also has some intelligence. It blocks the door by twining its vines around it, especially when it captures prey or is sleeping. Several staff members have already fallen victim to this. May 21st, 1998, Henry Sarton. <laughs> so... Okay. Jerry Lewis is working for Umbrella. That explains so much. Professor Sarton, Professor Sarton, to make you laugh, to make you think with the something and the deal and the... Mm -hmm. Hey. Hey. You know. Really great. That monkey's gonna pay. <laughs> oh dear. My wife is going to kill me. You don't have a wife. I mean, it's weird because he, he had a kid at one point. And yeah, then, that's right. And then he, I and then the kid that. disappeared, and then the kid actually came back again. So I'm I'm in, I'm eternally puzzled by it. Mm. Although I did love the fact that when they brought in Professor Frink's father, they did get uh, Jerry Lewis. Yeah, they did. Oh wow! They, I did not <laughs> that see was, that episode. It was one of the um, Halloween episodes. It was yeah. So basically, his father was cryogenically frozen, and to revive uh, after he gets revived, he starts. Stealing people's organs. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the Halloween aspect of the episode. Oh hell yeah! He's a Franken monster. Franken monster. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's a bummer we lost the, uh, the jibber jabber from the previous time we did this because there were, we were comment. Remember we were remember guys we were commenting on these cool little details like how the boxes move like that and separate. I miss how the boxes float. Yep. And move out of the way. Yeah. I Bring missed the good boxes. Uh, Not like those crappy boxes you can break now. Oh, oh God. You just, stab them and they, and you just stab them and, like, that's it. They just fall apart. Look at you, Leon, you jerk. <laughs> they do explode rather spectacularly, at least. That's true. Um, But, yeah, the... Yeah, it's like I'm in my head. I'm thinking like, should I tell my shark story again about the Neptunes? I did set it up in one of the early episodes. Oh god. Yeah, I think we do need to deal with that continuity aspect. Ah, oh, great. Um, okay, so as we're going into the Nep the, the in dealing with the Neptune tank sequence here. So the story, the short version of the story is I've I've mentioned before I have an issue with underwater areas and shark areas in games. Oh hi there, little bastard! Get the fuck out of my face. Oh um, hi, shark. <laughs> is uh, when I was about five or six, um, my mom took me to OMSI, which is the um, it's it's kind of like the science museum here in the Portland area, and um, they had an underwater exhibit. So it was like you know fish and undersea things and stuff, and yes, including sharks. So my mother's carrying me into the into the building over her shoulder, and is going forward without. Um, realizing how close I'm getting to a uh, particular part of the display in the exhibit. And so I get turned around and I come face to face with a full-size great white shark replica that is gigantic right in front of my face and with all of the stimulation already going on from the museum, I completely flipped the fuck out and had to go, go home because I was screaming bloody murder. Um... So sharks have terrified me ever since to some re regard. I actually had used to have a lot of nightmares about them when my teen years, which according to Jungian dream psychology, apparently has to do with a fear of a temper, which that tracks. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then Tomb Raider 2 kind of confounded things where they decided to start a level in the middle of the ocean surrounded by sharks. Yeah, that, that freaked me out too. That, was, that wasn't fun. But yeah, so that's my shark story. So whenever I get the chance to uh, kill sharks in games, I feel very happy. But there are way too many games that put you in helpless situations underwater with creatures chasing you around. Looking at you, Devil May Cry. <sighs> yeah. We're looking at you. Yeah. Okay. Hey Ooh. there. Mr. Flippy Flappy. Don't worry, Mr. Flippy Flappy. I'm going to let someone else kill you. Like uh, the oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I'm, I'm not going to kill you, but I'm not going to save you either. Yeah. So the basically, old Batman way. I was, I was just so so that maybe. Oh fuck. So uh, my shark story is: one day I went out in a tourist boat, and uh, the skipper of the boat was a friend of mine and said, "Look to your left. There's a basking shark. And he's right next to us." So I was just like patting his fin. <laughs> Oh, oh turkey. Oh, so yeah. Again, what was what was the texture like? Sandpaper. Hmm. It still boggles. Not, not smooth. Wet sandpaper. Hmm. Fascinating. Shark, not smooth. Mm hmm. No, um, no, no. I still love the detail in this game that you have to. You can look around the key and see the number to mark it. You know, to because it's interesting that it still has those aspects of clues the way that an old uh, point-and-click adventure game would do. Um, yeah, which is kind of nice. I Man, you're spending you're spending ages looking for the three o zero zero three key, now realizing you actually have it in your inventory. Right, you just haven't looked at it. <laughs> yeah, or you haven't like put it in the, or you put it in the box and you didn't know. It's like, oh, this is a dormitory key. I already have one of those, and it's like, no, 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 you don't got this one. Um, I like that it's it's still a thing in the the current Resident Evils that 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 still happens. Like where you don't necessarily always get to like rotate, but like with the remakes, there's been a couple times where that's actually been very necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like. I, um... Like even if you like even Resident Evil Two, when you had like the the card deck keys, mm -hmm. I you obviously knew they were like the diamond key, the hearts key, or whatever. But even if you examined them, it renamed them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so. We could read this file. This is pretty much just a couple of pages, really, about they found an element within the umbrella chemicals that uh, if you make a mixture, it kills uh, Plant 42. But here's nice. the thing. In our calculation, it will take less than five seconds to destroy Plant 42 if we put the V-Jolt directly on the root. I, I want to say that's a little optimistic. A little bit. A little bit. Hey, they're in the middle of the, a disaster. Let them have their optimism. They're already <laughs> dead. Okay, you know what? Relatable. <laughs> true, true that. All right. We're making pretty good time. All right, so we gotta do. We gotta go see. Um... Oh, oh boy! Oh boy! Song time is coming up. Oh yeah. Hey, look. I'm gonna it's walk towards this thing. <laughs> just, oh. just walk right in. Oh no! Ah, D danger hugs, uh, danger hugs. Oh, that's. I've got garden style, major moves. I got the stuff, and I think that proves you better move it out. And I'm out of here. No, it's no use. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, stop pointing your gun at his legs. It's not gonna Chris. save you by shooting your leg. <laughs> Sorry, it's my first day. Information in it in order to make the potion and kill the potion. Rebecca, please. That's almost as bad as Dragon Age making a poultice and having you drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't die. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe he's a fan of D and D. Uh. I, I'm gonna be completely honest here. I don't think Chris. I punch boulders. Redfield could even spell D and D. Ooh. Oh! Wow! Oh. Jesus! Oh, sick, sick burn on Chris Ooh. Redfield. That is that is rough. Oh, right. The code. That's a call out post for Chris Redfield. I need. To, I mean, uh, there there is a reason why he's called Chunk Melonfield at times. Yeah, I mean, amongst us, anyway. I just realized I need to. It's, it's mostly look. for his like uh, muscles. I, I have the code. I have the code. Where are you? Eh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Three one five. Bing. Light out. All right, so here we go. All right, and now it's time to. Uh, and now it's time for cooking up chemicals with Rebecca Chambers. We do, British do, British do, 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 bark, bark, bark. Okay, we first we take the empty bottle over here. And we get to be finished up with the UMB chemical number two. You put the key in the bottle, 
And we get the Kimmy into this bottle here. And then we go over to this roof and to get the other bottle. I'm going to probably stop that because, wow, that's going to get annoying pretty Please fast. Do. <laughs> Re- Rebecca Chambers, secret Muppet. <laughs> Rebecca uh, Chambers, breaking not so bad. <laughs> breaking barely. Brink- Brinky barely, Burton. Um... <laughs> So quick, quick, so th- this actually does raise a question, though. So, I mean, we, we're now on our kind of second major appearance of Rebecca in the game. And I know the, f- the fan base has had conflicting opinions about Rebecca for years because we've known. I mean, I know Vanessa and I in particular have known people that have loved Rebecca and have hated Rebecca with a passion. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've one end of the spectrum to the ov- other over the years because it turned out it was internalized misogyny. Yeah, that's kind of what I've realized, too. It's, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll be honest. I've always liked Rebecca, but I dislike the trope of like the child genius. Mm. Ah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I totally get that. Mm-hmm. It's funny because like the series is just fucking full of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Resident Evil love it. It child genius is. Yep. It's it's something that um. It's very manga to me, you know, very manga anime tropish as well, because I, I do notice as you go through the, uh, you know, you look at the tropes of a lot of like, especially like when you consider a lot of uh, the kind of high school animes with fantasy elements where it's like, you know, it's like they're 14, but they're able to do so much. Um, I, I will be honest here. I, I hate it for the fact that you're putting people who are barely adults into a situation where not even a, an adult of several years like Barry mm-hmm. would come out okay. And I hate that trope. Mm-hmm. So do you by that rationale, do you feel like you still have some animosity towards Rebecca or do you feel like oh, no. the way the characters... I've always liked Rebecca. Okay, I've cool. always liked Rebecca. I just hate that trope. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's sort of like... Because- I guess just to, to, to follow up, follow up question is: You mean that you were able to look past the age and that and just see her as a character? Yeah, because let's face it, she is not a combative person in this game. Mm-mm. Yeah, she's just literally there to play the piano and to crave jolt. I can animals. get past. Yeah, that's just it. Like, but. So I'm looking back at it, I do hate as well the, the idea that she's the mechanic for the Bravo team. That That is... I mean... I mean, come on. Well... Uh, no wonder the Bravo team helicopter crashed. I mean, well, it's on. it's mentioned in-game, but I, I do believe actually the mechanics expert is either Joseph or Forrest. Um... I'm Oh, God. Mm. I, part of me wants to pause this episode and go look at the instruction manual, but I, I'm sure... I mean... I mean, can- canonically, I think that changed with uh, RE0. Hmm. That might be... It might have changed to Edward. Yeah, because I think somebody pointed out she might be a medical genius. That doesn't mean she's a mechanical genius. Hmm. Okay. Helicopters and people are not the same thing. <laughs> Fuck you, <Matt>. Flappy. <laughs> He's not dead yet. Nah, he's, he's dead that, enough. That's right. That's right, Mr. Flippy Floppy. I want you to suffer. <laughs> it's like the end of Foxy Brown. And that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Becca Chambers' secret evil streak. We, we, we're, it's, 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 the, it's the point we realize Problem. that Rebecca is secretly just extra gangsta. Problem uh, solved. I can turn my back on it safely and walk away. Yep. All right, time to kill this mean green mother from outer space. Yeah. But he's from the Umbrella facility. Well, nice of them to, like, just... do that. Okay. All but right. I kind of would love to have seen Rebecca burst in with the flamethrower. That would be fucking rad. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... This is my usual spot. Two. Ow! Ow! Hey! Three. Hey! Four. Hey! 
five. That's it. We're done. Well, that, that that was just mean. I love that. No, I can have a salad. You know, I oh, was one shit. <laughs> uh yeah, my parents and I, I finally showed my parents the, uh, the. I think they both had seen the the work print version, but now there's that color version of the original ending of uh, oh, yeah. of Little Shop Before Us. My God, that's so fucking good. Right? <sighs> and that's, um, that's accurate to the play, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the play okay. ends on, like, Are you okay? the downer note, and then yeah. plants supposedly, so you know, him. taking over the world. We got to the root of the problem. Saved again. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Redfield, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, Redfield. <laughs> he keeps up those, he's gonna be dead field in a minute. Oh <laughs> I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Well, Chris Chris, please Richard's stop flirting with the eighteen year old. I thought he was just endorsing the men's warehouse. I, I think he was just endorsing the men's warehouse. It was 1996, 98. That's true. Maybe his radio is broken. Or maybe he's just a chicken ass. Yeah. I see. Understood. And maybe he's a dongle. We should somehow let Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe he's gonna get slapped. <laughs> I could just imagine, like, this, like, they land on the helicopter and Brad gets out and just sees this line waiting for him to go back into the police station. Swap, 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 swap. <laughs> Get the slap. Yeah. Being like airplane. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a, like a line of people just all waiting to slap him. Marvin's got, like, a chain. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin's also, like, he's got a chain and a crowbar and he's just like, mm-hmm. Yep. One of the SWAT guys has got like is wrapping the chain around his wrist <laughs> for like uh, impromptu knuckle dusters. <laughs> yeah, Elliot, Ed, Elliot Edward has like a brick. Oh God. Anyway, uh, so okay, so then we're gonna call this an episode, and uh, we'll be back with our return to the mansion, and uh, and see what else is going on. Because now we have this secret key. What key is this that we got here? We got ourselves a helmet huh? key. Oh. Oh. So. It's an episode.